James Rafferty has a fish pond in his basil farm. The fish are fed a high quality fish food. The microorganisms and microbiology and worms in the system are actually breaking down all of the solid waste and all the dissolved ammonia in the water into soluble nutrients for the plants to absorb. James feeds his fish and the fish waste feeds his basil. We use grinding pumps and we grind up their waste and we send it out into the greenhouse to be processed. So it's a symbiotic relationship between the plants and the fish, which allows us to harvest all this nice basil. It's pretty easy to kill a plant if you don't cut it in the right place. Nick Sue says the farm's natural structure has to be carefully monitored. We have a couple key pumps that pump throughout the entire system. If there isn't power going, the bubblers won't go for the fish. They won't have oxygen in the water for a period of time. High technology makes it possible to farm in the country and live in the city. There have been times where we receive a notification on our phone and it'll say, power's out. If anything goes wrong out here, we'd like to know right away. So we use the Wi-Fi system in the greenhouse and then all of our cell phones are also connected to our monitoring system and the camera system in the greenhouse. And then we all get notified so we can make our way out here if we need to. So it's like 30 minutes if something goes wrong to get out here, so we don't have a lot of time. If it does look like something serious, yeah, get up in the middle of the night and drive out here and make sure we fix it. Minor problems can be fixed from home. We can control the hoses, the pumps, the bubblers, the exhaust fans, everything basically from our house. If we are at home and some air needs venting, we can exhaust or we can intake or change the bubblers if we need to. Technology is key to the aquaponic operation, but there's an ongoing effort to reduce the farm's reliance on the grid. We've spent a lot of time putting in thousands and thousands of feet of uh, underground air tubing. These tubes here are actually buried eight to 10 feet below the ground. So the air is traveling underground eight feet and it's being preconditioned before coming into the greenhouse. So in the summertime, it's cheap air conditioning. All summer long, the earth below the greenhouse gradually gets warmer. So rather than bringing in cold air in the winter time, it preheats it and reduces our energy load that we have to do to heat it up. It took three years for the ground to heat up enough for us to be able to notice a difference on our heating bill in the winter time. It's a lot cheaper than paying for natural gas to heat the air, that's for sure. And it's more environmentally friendly. Like all farmers, they have to find ways to protect their crop. In this case, from a pest called a thrip. Our biggest pest is uh, thrips, and they're tiny, tiny little bugs. Right here is one of the assassin bugs. It's one of the beneficial insects that's living in the greenhouse. It almost looks like a small praying mantis. He'll go and eat the bugs that we don't really want to have in the greenhouse. They seem to find the thrips no matter where they are. And whenever we're packaging, we try to make sure that we don't send out one of these guys. Technology is essential at Rafferty Farms, but the system is deliberately natural. In terms of the philosophy side, we want to be closer to nature. And I think through technology, we can achieve peak efficiency. And so it's all these incremental steps and technologies that already exist, but actually finding a way to combine it all is, is what the key is going to be, I think, for us especially. I think there's an element of wanting to be here too. So <laughs> just being around nature, I think, is something we want to do. Vertical farming is in its infancy, and it's being built by a new generation of farmers who prefer to live in cities. We're located in a pretty nondescript warehouse, and we do everything indoors uh, in a controlled environment where we can adjust the lighting, the temperature, the CO2, and the nutrients the plants get. When you're developing something, it's essentially a big prototype and a lot of Home Depot trips, a lot of trips to various suppliers in the industrial area and it became a lot of driving and so the city just had all the amenities and resources we needed. 
We also wanted a lifestyle that we can still enjoy living in Calgary and everything associated with city living. Deepwater Farms delivers fresh baby greens to restaurants and grocery stores, so it makes sense to be close to their market. Everything can be just in time for deliveries and distribution, and so that was really key for us in the early days was to get out to market quick and have everything essentially harvested and delivered in the same day. Food security is a growing concern, and vertical farming is getting a lot of attention. We have essentially a food factory that can grow food consistently year round and manage those ups and downs and essentially become pandemic proof. Growing crops indoors can make for a more consistent harvest. We specialize in baby greens, so things like baby kale, arugula, and we grow some culinary varieties like mustard greens. All the crops are uh, high density, so they like being close together. They like a lot of light. They like a lot of nutrients. They love CO2. And everything in our farm grows in about 10 to 14 days after we put it under light. We grow about 1,500 pounds of greens every week that go to Calgary and get consumed that same week. Deepwater also grows fish for market but the fish and plant farms are kept separate for now. We're running what we consider a decoupled system. So we have the aquaculture system where we have fish swimming in water and we have a horticulture system where we're operating a hydroponics farm. And so as our fish farm grows, we can take that fish waste and create a shelf stable product and a novel fertilizer that can be applied in agriculture at an industrial scale. Get ready for a splash. <laughs> and they're like that every time. You would swear that they are starving. <laughs> so we actually import our fish. So they come in as fingerlings, about yay big. And we grow them from that size. Most of our fish go to restaurants. They go to the mountains and then to most of the high-end restaurants throughout Calgary. Demand has shifted in this extraordinary pandemic year. When COVID came, we saw the restaurant business go down to zero, and we saw retail pick up big time. And so everybody was forced to go to the grocery stores, start cooking. And I think for us, that was just really showed how important local is. Technology is coming out at a rapid pace, and that's really what we have at our fingertips now, is the ability to locate these farms anywhere in the world and start to grow food year-round. We always throw a postcard in the boxes with each order. Back at Rafferty Farms, today's crop is going to market. There's no need to rinse or wash it at all. Just cut and goes directly into the bag. The distributor will pick it up, and take it to the customer tomorrow morning. It'll be on the shelf in the grocery stores tomorrow afternoon. Hey. Hey, how are you? They're local, they're sustainable, and they're really incredible products. You can taste the basil so authentically. Yeah, we'll see you see later. Ya. Social media is connecting customers to the vertical farmers. They want local, they want clean, they want to be able to trust the products that we're providing for them. We want to make sure that what we're putting in the bowl is what we say it is. This basil is like, the quality is so much higher than, than anything that I've gotten in the past. Our customers really like it. They like knowing where it comes from. They like knowing that it's sustainably grown. It's so fragrant, it's, it's incredible.